Why are there? So okay, probably what I'll do is um, I'll grade the test tomorrow. We'll go over it tomorrow. A couple of the questions that a lot of people are getting wrong. Um, we're going to finish up chapter whatever the heck we're in, five. Yeah. Uh, we have two sections. I'm going to do a section that I've never taught before because it does have a neat little component in it. And so we have sum to product, product to sum, and equations. Equations I'll spend a little time on because nobody gets them, which is weird because they're simplistic. Why are you sitting here? No, I'm going to grade this. I'm grading it. I got it here. Are you grading it? We'll see. I'm still going to grade it. It don't matter. So these are the ones that you're supposed to have already conquered. <laughs> uh, notice I'm leaving off the tangent one. The tangent one's not super important. Um, sine and cosine is actually much more important than tangent is. The tangent's good for one thing, and that's finding the slope of an angle of a line. It's the best place. Even though I have for. all this stuff, can we just like, get a chance to write it down? Yeah, I want to yeah, rewrite this. Oh, I, I don't know where my name is right now. Well, no they're way. in my room. Did you write a writing attempt? No. no. <laughs> I'm trying to write it down. Oh, I have two of them. He's going to take a picture of it. It's in the book. What? I have a book. I think there's a picture of my Why is it mine? Thank you, Lyle. On that camera, it's not even the dream. Hey, this is Apple. It's like my phone. What are you talking about? I'm going to say Jack. That's not bad. Oh, those are so expensive. So, now there's a couple that I left off because they're quick adjustments like sine x plus y. Remember, this just stays the same sine. It's uh, sine, cosine, cosine, sine. The cosine one is plus on the inside, it's minus on the outside, and it's cosine, cosine, sine, sine. So those are the only two I still require you to memorize. The rest of them I would give you on a test because I'd rather you just know how to use them. The second two are your double angle, um, and I gave the more popular version of the cosine of 2x. Remember, there's also that 1 minus sine squared x? Yes, sir. Uh, 2 sine squared x. Um, I gave the power reduction formulas probably more important than all the other ones. And the half angle formulas, which are, eh, they're okay. But they give you messy answers. So those were all the ones that we did before break. And trig identities. Remember, um, like, cosecant is... Secant. Uh, cosecant. Oh, cosecant. 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 One over sine. One over sine. Secant is... One over cosine. Tangent is... Sine over cosine, cosine and cosine over sine, and so forth and so on. There's a good possibility that I'm going to have to go to the bathroom and get tissues at some point during this class period. That'd be fine. Just letting you know. Anytime you want to leave my room, you go right ahead. I'll lock the door behind you. I'll assist with that. <laughs> so, today we are going to do... Oh, which one that first? That was me. I know it was. That I'm going to go cool? cry to court. <laughs> well, actually, just a little review also. Is this the one where you figure out the other side? Yep. Identity. Warm your brain up about identity. So you said we're talking about This is kind of um, the last section we did, which was five three. Yeah, five three. Five three. So this is a half angle formula. If you want to think of it that way, it would be really hard to change the left hand side into the right hand side. So we're going to change the right hand side into the left hand side. This is just a review of how to do transformations of trigonometry. All right, so what should be the first thing you do on the right-hand side? Divide everything by tan. Hold on. Oh, what? That's so proud of change, that. that. uh, change everything into uh, sine and cosine. Change into sine. So you get sine of x over cosine of x plus sine of x over 1 for somebody's purpose. Like you're going like so fast. Okay. I have to write down the problem. <laughs> that just means you're behind. 
This one becomes 2 times sine of x over Happy cosine years. of x. Okay. All right. So okay. remember identities, you change everything into sine and cosine, and you try to force this side to look like that side. So what kind of fraction is this thing called? Complex. 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 What's the best way to break it down? CD, right? Uh, the, the Common denominator. denominator. I understood you. That's even sadder. Yes. Um, <laughs> and do what with it? Multiply and multiply. Multiply, multiply everybody by. Yeah. So the common denominator yeah. is? Cosine x. Cosine of x. We have to do cosine of x over 1 for... Oh, yeah. Chelsea. The blondie over here. Doors right here. I thought I warned you last week. Week before. Put it on the desk. I thought the desk would already... Stop talking. So if you multiply everything by cosine, this becomes... Sine x. Sine x. Plus cosine sine x. Plus. Cosine x sine x. Uh, whichever one. Over 2 sine x. Hmm. Cosine x sine x. Can you separate them? What do you mean separate? Oh, wait. What? Can you do like sine x oh, over 2 sine x plus cosine x over 2 sine x? You could, but there's an easier way. But that would get rid of the sine x's and make it cosine. Well, that's what I'm saying. You factor out the sine x in the top. And then, yeah, and, then and then in the bottom, yeah. Yes. Okay. Either way will work perfectly fine. Either way you do it. So it's the same thing. One plus cosine x, or one half. Like it's like a, you gotta have no, sine no, x right. in the front. One plus cosine x. Um, over. Oh, two. two. So I was gonna do one half well, plus cosine x. Yeah. All right. Skip step. Bring it over here. Okay. Factor out a sine of x in the top. Uh -huh. What's left behind? One plus, cosine. Cosine. one plus cosine of x. What's in the bottom? Two sine x. So this? wouldn't it be sine x? Because the sine x's are canceling. Oh, I thought it was like two, two of sine x's. Mm. So like it's sine x two times sine x. I thought it was like sine x plus sine x equals two sine x. Well, it is sine x plus sine x equals two sine x, but you can cancel the sine x's because it's multiplication. It, you're not getting what I'm saying. Okay. So like if it was like two, if it was like two x, it would be x plus x, right? Right. And there would be an x on the top, so only one of the x's would cancel out. You don't cancel become... through addition. Okay. Cancel through multiplication. Okay. Not division. Or addition. Okay. All right, so how do I go from here to there? Well, you got to do like one uh -huh. half yeah. plus cosine, cosine x over two. Yeah, yeah what's that going to get you? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> what's this equal to if you go one more step? Um, Just the cosine x over yeah. two. Um, it's equal to that thing over there, cosine. 1 plus cosine 2. Yeah, that's right. Square yeah. root of it. But if you square it, what happens to the square root? It becomes <laughs> positive. And which is exactly that. So this becomes that cosine squared. So do you want to show it's it squared and it's a half angle. It's yeah. kind of like the square root kind of cancels out. Well, if you square this side and you square this side, the square root just goes away. Okay. Sweet. So you're basically using this formula. But the two x or half x on this side and x over there. But it's easier to manipulate this one. Okay. It gets absorbed. It's one plus cosine x over two. One plus cosine x over two. Okay. Uh, uh, all right. So that's the quick review of identities. All the nice little formulas you need to work with. Wait, I won't. Just erasing this, and then I'm going to rewrite one more thing. Let's go to oh. <laughs> five four. Oh, which one is first? Product of sum or sum to product? She opened the door again. Oh wait. And she left. Close it. That's because she didn't want me to lock her out. Lock her out. Precisely. <laughs> this first one has very little application, but it leads into the second one, which has a lot of application. Um, so this is the product to some formula, and it works on the concept if you have cosine of x plus y, and you write down what it's equal to. Oh, this is cosine, cosine. So it's this thing. Cosine, cosine, sine, sine. Yeah. 
and the sign on the inside changes with the sign on the outside. Positive, negative. Why didn't you close the door? I didn't close it all the way. Because then and probably would have been a week back in. Right underneath it, we'll write the other version of it. We get those two that we should know off the top of our head. And what I'm going to do is, since the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side of both of these equations, if I add them together by the property of, you know, if you add something to the left, you add the same equality to the right. If I add them all together, it should keep everything in equality. So I'm going to take this whole thing and just put a big old plus sign here, basically adding both sides straight down. Oh, gosh. So the left-hand side becomes cosine of x plus y plus cosine of x minus y. And it becomes 2 cosine x. Would it be cosine, 2 cosine y or just 2 cosine x cosine y. Okay. It's a product okay. of something and you're adding. It's like xy plus xy. It's 2xy. Okay. And, and the sine x's and out. sine y's are going to cancel, cancel out. So what we're going to do is we're going to rearrange it as a product, cosine of x, cosine of y, is equal to one half of the sum cosine of x plus y uh, plus cosine of x minus y. Whoa, what? what did I do to get the one half? This is the one half. Half. You, you, you divided by two. Yeah, I just divided by two. And I flipped the sides. That's oh. all I did. Right. Right. What? This is the part where you said we can use our notes on our test, right? This is when I say I'm going to give you the formula. Okay. <laughs> you don't have to derive it. I might ask you to derive one, but they're not that hard. I can't drive. You can't drive. <laughs> That's true. From the beginning. From the beginning. From the beginning. I took the two original sum and difference formulas for the cosine, gotcha. and since everything is equal to each other, if I add both sides, it still keeps the equality. It's like adding five to both sides of the equation. Gotcha. All right, so when I added them all together, I got this piece on the left, the cosine plus the cosine. Mm -hmm. And then when I added these two, the signs are going to cancel because one's positive and the other one is negative. And then you get two of these cosine, cosine y's. Yeah. Cosine x, cosine y. Then I move this to this side and divide by two. What is two? Hmm? still missed a spot. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I moved. It I, I took the entire equation and flipped yeah, it over. Now so instead of two yeah. equals x, I wrote it as x equals two. Yeah, okay, and then I divide by a half or multiply by a half. So this is one of the formulas. So I want you to do the other one. To do um, do this one. Sine x plus y, okay. sine x minus y. Wait, what? It's so going to come out the same thing. Okay. No, it's not. Well, it's going to look similar, but it's not going to be the same thing. So come up with the formula of sine x, y, come up with the formula of sine x minus y, and see what happens if you add it. Can you let us do it? Yeah, go ahead. Isn't this going to change? No. Mm -hmm. Sine outside. Like this. Cosine signs. Are we adding them? Signs. Are we adding them? Oh. Yeah, you do it. Yeah, but you, I didn't know if we were supposed to add Are you done? Yeah. yeah, just add them. Just add them. Let's see, this is. Yeah, it comes out there. It comes out there. Mm -hmm. Oh, you put Y first there? I did this to keep my cosine thing. It's not that. Oh, so it doesn't matter if you put X first or Y first. But you have to. I'm done. X, you have to have a Y. Okay. I got you. Mm -hmm. You need some tissue in this room. Yeah. <laughs> I can't be smoking. Got a coat booger. Thanks, I got it. I've always been smart dog. He's just, don't booger. listen to him. <laughs> I've always been smart dog. I do it a lot. So what you should end up with is <laughs> one half. Well, hold on, sine uh, x, cosine I'm y sorry. is equal to <laughs> one half. Sine x, 
plus y sine of x plus y plus sine x minus y. Plus sine of. Oh my gosh, that sounds like I'm from North Carolina. Gosh, wow. You are from North Carolina. You, you sound like you're from Rocky Mountain. <laughs> That's his own country. Remember you what? It was so nice to me. So, how about this one? Northern accent while I was up in New York. I said cool. Oops, 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 oops. Five. Sine x cosine. Well, I'm the cat. What? Sine x cosine. Wait, what? Now, notice these two formulas are cosine, cosine, and sine, sine. That's sine x cosine. So how would you come up with sine, cosine? Um, you would do that right there. Sine, sine x, cosine, y right there. This one? That flip, would, the, flip the x's and y's. What are you talking about? Sine, that's the exact same thing. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, you either did something wrong or you just want to show no, no, people no, no, no. you just gave us. I'm sorry. What are you trying to do here? Oh. Wait a second. I got cosine x sine y. Hold on, hold on. Brain shut down. Actually, I think that's the only two you need. There's what? One. We'll go with one. I have a question. Yeah, no Why do I have cosine x sine y and you have uh, sine x cosine y? Oh, I wrote something wrong. <laughs> what do you have there? I want to get back to New York. I, I did um, cosine x sine y plus cosine y sine x. Oh, you just did it backwards. Does it matter? It's, a, it's just annoying. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Something's wrong. Oh, no, it's not this stuff. Maybe okay. you're wrong. Those are the two main ones. They're, they're not super important. How about... So then we don't need to know them? Nah. Well, I'm going to give them to you. You have to know how to use them. For instance... or expand it out. Sine of 3a, cosine of 2a. Well, let's see here. What are you going to change it to add? 4a minus well, 1a. It turns into 2A. this is <laughs> x. This is y, right? Yeah. So in that case, x is equal to? Yeah. 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 3a. 3a. And y is equal to? 2a. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
If I expand this side out, what does it become? Using a difference formula. So it'd be C times C out. Cosine theta. Cosine theta. Cosine theta. Cosine theta. Cosine theta. Plus, plus um, sine theta, theta, sin theta minus sine phi, sine phi, so sine phi, sine phi, that's phi, sine phi. Okay, now phi is a known value, it's a fixed value, so when you say cosine of phi and sine of phi, those are also fixed values, they're just numbers. So if this is just a number, it's, it's not super fixed, but it's a known value, let's put it that way. And this is also a known number. So when I go C times cosine of phi, that just gives me another number. number. Right. So what we're going to do is we're going to say... Wait, what? Uh, C is a number. Okay. C is a number. When I multiply it to the cosine phi, that's just going to give me another number. number. So I'm going to let A equal C cosine phi. All right. And at the same time, I'm going to let B equal C sine phi. What? It's just manipulation. It's just a manipulation. This times the number, this times the number are just two new numbers. I didn't say nine down. So if we let this equal a, it becomes a cosine of theta. Why would it be cosine of theta when you have to still have c of cosine of theta? What I'm trying to show you is. I can rewrite this side. I can manipulate the right hand side to become like the left, like an identity. Mm -hmm. yeah. So once I get this equal to this, then I can say, well, these two are actually indeed equal to each other. Well, yeah, of course they are. You put an equal sign in there. Oh, dear Lord, I'll prove <laughs> that they were equal. Oh, poof. Um, the C, doesn't the C go to the cosine theta as well? You're going to distribute 2 times 3 times 4? Good point. Just poof it. Okay. <laughs> So if I give a problem that looks like this, and yes, this is going to be on the test, which is not anymore. I'll give you the formula. I expect you to be able to use it. Uh, so here's how it's going to work. Um, the easiest way to do this, if you have three cosine of x, ma, let's give it plus, plus four sine of x. And I want to write as a single cosine. That's like that. I want to write it as a single cosine. It's like that. Yeah, but we have to figure out what that number C is. So, so I have C. to find a relationship for C. Now, doing it the vector style, I know the relationship, so I have to kind of give you a little heads up. The way this is going to work, since x is, um, we're going to consider it in the first quadrant because 3 and 4 are both positive. I can't prove it in this style. This is the pre-calculus way of proving it. There's no way of showing how C and A and B are interrelated. Uh, if I could do it vector style, I could show you that they are related. So the way you're going to do is you're going to draw a triangle. Mm -hmm. This angle down here becomes phi. Phi phi. 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 I hope I'm. Um, since it's cosine, that becomes the adjacent side. It just becomes, don't, it's not in the do a trigonometry. It literally just becomes it because of another proof. And sine becomes the opposite side. So it's the Wait, third side. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. How did you get it? It's just the way it works. The cosine, the coefficient of the cosine becomes the adjacent side. The coefficient of the sine becomes the opposite side. I can't prove it unless I go into vector calculus. They're distracting me. Three, four, five. Ladies. Especially daughter. And this side, of course, is? Five. five. This is what C is equal to. So when I rewrite this thing, it becomes equal to that? the Pythagorean theorem, three, four, five triangle. Oh, because C. Uh, this is nine plus sixteen, which is twenty-five. Well, no, I didn't like. Never I should know it was letter C. Yeah. Much. That's but that's what I'm saying. That it's proved over it's there, but I can't prove it. Um, so the we'll cosine becomes this. Mm -hmm. The sine becomes that. The third side becomes the C we're looking for. Right. So this whole equation or this expression here becomes five cosine of x minus phi. How would you find out what phi is equal to? Oh, oh, you're trying phi to is five. Can you five. open up the door? A, a is five phi. Kind of okay. A is five cosine phi. 
Yeah, I know, but how would you find phi knowing this triangle is a 3, 4, 5? So I'll do uh, like yeah. inverse sine sine where you take the inverse sine. Would you do side. inverse sine or inverse cosine or inverse tangent? It's inverse, inverse tangent. tangent. Because, because these are the two numbers the, that we're But you know what I mean. I know. So phi in this case would be tan inverse of 4 thirds. Tan inverse of 4 thirds. Right. I did not miss this at all. What? The math. <laughs> <laughs> all this math. No, I did not say that. <laughs> <laughs> At least Peter Cottontail. That wasn't me either. Yeah, that was How about uh, tan inverse of 4 thirds? 7 cosine 3x yeah. minus 4 sine <laughs> of 3x. <laughs> The only thing about this formula is the angles have to be exactly the same. So this one is 3x, this one also has to be 3x. If they're not exactly the same, that formula doesn't work. Okay. Wait. We'll just take that word. Wait, what? The angles of the sine and the cosine have to be exactly the same. same. They can't be different. It can't be 3x here and 2x there. Well, obviously, because it's sine theta is sine theta. I'm just saying, I'm just emphasizing the point because we just did some difference or product of some. And they could be different there. So what you're going to do with this one is, since the sine, which is your vertical, is negative, and your cosine, which is the horizontal, is positive, what quadrant would be this be in? And the third. Wait, what? Seven. Say it again. Horizontal is seven. All right. Vertical fourth. is negative. Fourth. So this would be in the fourth. Fourth, because it's seven along the x-axis. All right. Down and four. down for what? On the y. So it'd be down here. Okay. So this is phi. Um, most books want phi to be this angle, though. Oh, well. Oh, that's too much. They wrap it all the way around, but I'm not going to go that far. Oh, yeah, thank you. So we're just looking for phi here, and we'll go this direction. It'll be negative. It's going to be a negative angle because you're going a new negative angle. Well, you take an inverse of negative 4 over 7. It'll give you a negative angle. So what are we looking for here? Phi or the cosine? Combine it as a single function cosine. Well, let's see. Seven, so this is going to equal 16, C cosine of 3x minus phi. Well, let's see here. 49 plus 16, that equals like what? Square root of 65. Or something? So the square root of 65. Square root of 65. All right, so this becomes equal to? Okay. Square root of 65. Square root of 65 times? No, the square. She just said 8. 8.06 <laughs> is the answer. Square root of 80 is 65. Cosine of 3x minus phi. What? Well, since it, since it, since the original is minus and phi has to be negative, wouldn't it be plus phi? Hmm, leave it as minus phi. And then whatever phi comes up, you can make it plus when it changes. Wow. Well, yeah. Watch what happens. You go phi equals tan inverse negative four sevens. of negative four sevens. What's that equal to? Negative 29. Something. Negative degrees yeah. or radians? Degrees. Give me radians. This is all uh, radians. Pi over 180. Phi is approximately? 29 pi over 180. Negative what? 29 pi. Because you don't you times it by pi over <laughs> what is tan inverse of negative four sevens four and radians? Uh, big old triangle. Why is it tan? Wait, can you? Would tangent? you like for the pi oh, to be in there? Opposite over adjacent. Would you like the pi to be in there? Tan inverse is better to find phi because this is going to be a number that wasn't given to begin with. What's that? Would you like pi to be in there? No, no, I just it's want a decimal. Negative point five one nine one. Point five two. Okay, that works too. So if you want to write it properly, this would be square root of 65 times cosine 3x. And then since this one's negative and you're saying minus phi, it's going to become plus 0.52. Okay. Okay. That's not too bad, right? Is that, are we done with that? Yeah. I mean, that's all you can do with it. What is the point of it? Oh, you're just changing it. As long as it lands in the first and the fourth quadrant, you're pretty safe. Okay. Well, Add pi to it. Add pi to it? Add pi to it. Like if it ends up here in the second quadrant, tangent is negative. The only other quadrant tangent's negative is, is where you're going to get your answer. So if you add pi to it, it shoots you back the other direction. And if you're in the third quadrant, it's supposed to be positive. Your answer would be in the first quadrant, but if you add pi to it, you end up in the third. Exactly where you need to be. I'm sorry, what? When you do tan inverse, if you're looking for this angle over here, 
whatever that is, then the calculator is going to give you this answer over here. So to get to the other answer, you just add y. So if your answer lands in the uh, second or third quadrant, supposed to be, you just add pi to your answer for theta. Phi. 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 You want me to do one? We'll do one. Uh, so, what quadrant should I put it in? Second. second. So negative 3 cosine of 5x plus 7 sine of 5x. Uh, negative 3 on the horizontal. So it's going to be going in this direction. And positive 7 on the other one. So you get negative 3, 7. And your angle phi is actually this one. Because that's because it's obtuse. Right. It's an obtuse angle, so you have to go into the second quadrant. So what's the third side? Oh, uh, it's, um, it's going to be like 9 plus 49, which is going to be like 58. The square, square root of 58. Square root of 58. Yes. Does 58 break down? No. Darn it. Yes. So this becomes square root of 58 cosine 5x minus phi. You're still finding phi, right? What? You're, you're, not, you're finding phi. Why, why can it be? I have to find phi for. Uh, why does that have to be phi? Yeah. Why can't it be like pi? How hard is it to draw phi? Draw a circle, draw a line through it. Is there significance to it? Like, it's the same yes. reason why it can't it be alpha. It comes into play in three okay. dimensions oh, yeah. eventually. It becomes one of the I angles you have to work with. Phi, theta, alpha, beta, gamma. Why are you subtracting phi? Why do we it's just the way it works. <laughs> I mean, I showed how it does work one way, but it's not the right way to do it. The right way to do it is that way. Question. Okay. This way. This is the proper way to prove it, but you yeah. don't understand any of that. <laughs> I know that. That's why triangles should carry larger numbers. Vectors? No. Once you do find out the, um, you just add, add, add um, pi to it, right? Yeah, when we get there. So when you say. It's in second quadrant, is it always a fairly good luck? Yes. But. Here's the thing that's going to happen. When you do phi equals tan inverse of, what would it be? 7 and negative 3. Negative 7 thirds. Type that in your calculator, and your answer is going to come out. Negative 1.165. Negative 1.165? 1. Yeah. 1, 7. Hold up. All right. What's wrong with negative 1.17? No. It can't be no. because it's, it's down here. Yeah. But that's not where my angle is. Yeah. My angle is over... Here, how can you tell me it's not supposed to be in the right place? Because negative 1.17, if yeah. you think about it, this is 3.15, right? Yeah. Yep. So if you're negative 1.17, you're down here someplace, mm -hmm. guaranteed. And our angle is supposed to be in the second quadrant. Gotcha. So negative 1.17 is down here, this way. So you add pi to it. And when you add pi to it, you're coming back over there. So you go plus pi. Which is 1.97. 1.97. 1. So the proper one would be square root of 58 cosine 5x minus 1.97. What is it? Is it supposed to be radians? Radians, yeah. There's a problem with us. 66.69. Which is negative 1.17 radians. Oh. If you do it in degrees, I'll understand it because there's a big difference between the radius yeah, and the degree. Why do you need oh. plus pi? What's that? Because when you do the tan inverse, it ends up in the fourth quadrant. Mm -hmm. But my triangle is in the second quadrant. Remember, tan inverse only works in the first and the fourth. fourth. And I want my answer in the second. Mm -hmm. So since we're down here, the reference angle of these two triangles are exactly the same. Yeah. So you just add pi to it. Okay. And it puts you in the right quadrant with the right reference angle. Are you going to have to know to do that? Yes. That's why drawing the picture is really important. You've got to know where you are and where you need to go. All right. So that's that. Let's change product of sum to sum to product. Okay. And we could change a weight.
What's that? Awake to sleep. Awake to sleep. Ew. Some to profit. I can't breathe out of my nose. If you want to put A and B in there, go right ahead. Use capital A, capital B, not little a, little b. Why? Just because. Because he said it works. What is one is? Oh, fine. I was just trying to give you a suggestion. You can see it better that it's an angle when it's capital. Okay, so here's what we're going to do with this one. Since I want to go from a sum to a product, I want to have something like sine of x plus sine of y on the right-hand side. And I want to push it together as a product, which is on the left hand I'm sorry, side. Sorry, what? I want to have a sine of a singular angle plus the sine of another angle, and I want to force them to go from a sum to a product. I'd be better than drawing all that crap. <laughs> Get used to it. It's not that bad. Like 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 so, what we're going to do is instead of dealing with alpha and beta, we're going to let x equal the sum, and we're going to let y equal. The difference. Mm. What this sets up is what's called a system of equations. What I want to solve for is alpha and beta. So basically what I want to do is get rid of alpha and beta and replace it with x and y. So, do you remember how to solve systems of equations? Just give me a second. No. no. Just Wait, equation. systems of equations? Uh, yes. No. Solve for one variable. Solve for one, one variable. Equation, make the other. Yeah. Yeah. You could do it that way, or oh, you could do elimination. No. So if it's like x like minus y, you it's would make. change something. Elimination is easier. No. If I take this and write no. it down there, no. then you go y equals alpha minus beta. If I take these two equations and just add them together, what do you get? X plus y. X plus y. Alpha. Equals two alpha. Now remember, my goal is the alpha and the beta by themselves. So alpha is equal to x plus y over 2. So that's one of them. If I take x equals alpha plus beta, and I subtract y equals... Now, if I subtract, it becomes a negative y. The alpha becomes... Positive. If, that, if I change y sign, alpha becomes negative, negative. and beta becomes positive. So you get negative alpha plus beta. So when I add these two together, what do you get? x minus y equals 2 beta. And therefore, beta is equal to? x minus y over 2. x minus y over 2. So that's our other substitution. So where you see alpha, you're going to replace it with x plus y over 2. Where you see beta, you're going to replace it with x minus y over 2. What? Why? Because this is what's going to make our formula work. Um, so this becomes sine of, it's supposed to be alpha. It's supposed to be alpha. So x plus y over 2. x plus y over 2. And cosine of? Hold up. The, the x minus y over 2. That's supposed to be beta, x minus y over 2. Is equal to 1 half. Uh, x plus y over 2 plus mm -hmm. alpha plus beta. X. 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 So this becomes sine of x plus sine of y. y. All right. It's just some manipulation. Yeah. It's not horrible, guys. Yeah. Okay. Since I want a formula for the sum to a product, I've got to get rid of the half, so I'm just going to multiply both sides by. Two. Bring it up over here. So we'll get sine of x plus sine of y is equal to two times sine of x plus y over two and cosine of x minus y over two. That's what's considered sum to product. Okay.
get it. I don't know what the heck that is. Wait, hold up. What is this? You start with the product to sum. What, so what, what, what's the, how did you get that much? No, what's the formula? <laughs> what, what's the thing on the bottom? That's just the substitution of the alpha and the beta. To get no, I'm just going to write, I'm, I'm just going to write that. Yeah, that's right. Two. Do the twos cancel out? No. I just multiply both sides by two. No, the twos. These? No. Over there. Got it. Over there. Over there. Holy crap. Oh, you mean these twos? With that two. No, 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 no. So you're saying if you have two times Okay, square never mind. It was a stupid question. Two, I got it. And okay. The okay, I get it. It was a stupid question. It's inside a function. You don't have to, like, embarrass you. Embarrass you? Embarrass. Embarrass. Uh, what are the other ones? That's what it divides. Can no. No. I can't think of the other ones. More interesting than holy. Tell them that I'm 96% Jesus. What's that? I'm 96% Jesus. 96%. Yeah, the four percent she's taking. No. No, I'm 4% human. I'm 96% Jesus. No, Satan isn't human. Anyway, um, so Jesus can walk on water, and I can walk on cucumbers, and cucumbers are 96% water. It makes me 96 <laughs> water. Now you want to give us one that actually have numbers in it, you have to right? Um, actually, yeah. actually have numbers in it. Because all he was doing there was showing you how it works. Yeah. I'm yeah. trying to get you on that part. He was just showing us how the formula works and why he gets it. <laughs> That's the other one. I just couldn't remember it off the top of my head. Alright, out of the two of these, actually... Make it open. It's not out of those two. It's not out of those two. Oh! Now, how do you know which one to use at what point? Hmm? How do you know which one to use at a certain point? Well, that's the thing. Um, these are the obscure ones that I usually don't teach, and they only have a few applications. I just wanted to talk about one of them. This one, well, actually, both of these actually have very good applications to it. Uh, Ferris wheel problem. When you do the Ferris wheel problem, you're going to have either a sine plus a sine or a cosine plus a cosine. cosine. So basically, you can think of it as this one is the big circle and this one is the small one. And what you wanted to try to do is to get a, an interesting graph out of it. So when you're riding it, you have a lot of ups and downs. Yeah, kind of. One of the better graphs looks something like that. It has a bunch of ups and downs. So when you're riding it, it doesn't feel like you're just going. You know, it's really bright. Around the circle, the which is really spin. boring. That's really fun. The triple spin. What? What's the triple spin? That's where it actually turns you, angles you, and then you are like a scrambler. That's cool. That's pretty fun. Where is that? Is it crazy? Alright. Oh, yeah. So, what's really cool about this is it actually has applications to like music. Does anybody play an instrument that's like a string instrument? It's the easiest one. A violin. You, a violin? Yeah, you'd have to tune a violin. A cello. I play the violin and the upright bass. Really? Cello. Awesome. Cello. You know how to tune it? I do. What I know. It? How do you know it's in tune? Um. Well, I tune I tune my upright bass with a tuner. Yeah, I know. And I tune my. But how do you know? How do I know? How does it sound? Sound. How does it sound? Yeah, when it's out of tune, how does it sound when you're using tuner? Sound waves. Yeah. The sound waves are what? Faster. Well, they go. And they make beats, right? And then when you get it in tune, it flattens out. It flattens right out because then it becomes harmonic. Okay. Same idea. So what happens is if you're tuning a guitar, these two frequencies are going to be rel relatively close. But if it's out of tune, they're going to be a little bit farther apart, a little bit off. And it makes a weird sound when you play it because it just doesn't sound right in your ears. So, for instance, if this one is doing, oh, what would be a unless you don't know where it is when it's tuned. <laughs> 64 hertz. 
I don't know what um, note that is, but so it's what, actually what is fixed this? note. Music. Are, are you just I trying tell to tell us how it applies to real life uh -huh. right now? Are we going to be asked this? Uh -huh. Oh, God. Why? Why not? <laughs> no. Because I like asking weird questions. <laughs> Bridget, you just said why. Why? I have a question. Why? Why? <laughs> why do you have a question? Can I have a question? Anyways, what's the um, one over hertz thing called? Hertz okay. cycles per second. Okay. No, no, no. The one over hertz is the opposite. Period. Why do we need to know that? Like, why, why are you asking that? I don't know. Um, let's say this one is going at. I like it on the way. Huh? As long as they're close together. If they're further apart, what I'm going to describe doesn't really work. Right? They have to be relatively close together. So these are two notes relatively close together. If this is Hertz, this is cycles. Per second. It's a lot of cycles. Cycle means one time around, right? I know what a cycle is. So if this is a cycle per second, how do I change it into reciprocal? Radians. Times it pi over 180. No, 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 no. If this is cycles, how do I change it into radians? You put it in your calculator. What is a cycle? 360 degrees. What is a cycle? Two pi. Two pi. Yeah. So how do I change this into radians? Times it by two pi. Thank you. I was doing so you times this by two pi. And it's you times that one by two pi. 128 pi. 128 pi. This one? Per minute. Per minute. Per second. In kilogram. 144. 144 pi per minute. Second. 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 It cycles per second. Is it right? <laughs> Why are you looking at me? Back row want to leave today? Seriously. When did you calm down? All of you calm down. God. Whole week off. You can come back and be calm for four weeks and then be done. Okay. Now, what we did, uh, chapter four. The cosine actually becomes cosine of 128 pi t. Do you want me to describe why it becomes 128 pi t again? No. Times it by um, um, mm. 7. It takes the radians per second and it dumps right in here. It becomes a circular frequency. Mm -hmm. But if you want, we can go through the whole no, 2 pi over b and all that mess. And it comes out to be that number. The other one would be cosine of? I'm so confused. Oh, all right. We'll go the long way. Huh? Long so, way. So, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, if I just put, so it's always at the cosine x. Oh, is that? Okay. Never mind, I get it. It's, it's that not is, that it's always it's that. It's because that oh, is trick. cosine x, oh. cosine y. I get it. If this is, go on. Okay. If you go want, on. we can go the long way, which okay. changes go this on. to cycle, go seconds on. per cycle. Go on. And then go on. You know, solve for v and all that fun stuff. Go on. So this one becomes 144 pi t. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I can do the long way. No, I don't want to do it the long way. I mean, I'm just... <laughs> I'm so, this thing is x, this thing is y. And that is, why I was pointing, that is what I was pointing out. Ah, okay. <laughs> so, if this is x and this is y and this is the formula we want to use, this becomes 2, two cosine. 128 pi t? Well, it's going to be 128 pi plus... What? Why do you want to Well, it's going to be x plus y. Yes. So it'll be x plus y. Okay. It's oh, I'll write it all out. 128 pi t plus 144 pi t all over 2. So, it'll be, um... Yeah, yeah, hold on. Get the other one. <laughs> Get the other one before you start figuring out what that one is. So this one becomes 128 pi t minus 144 pi t all over 2. two. two. I would rather have done that in my head. 270. Two over two. Uh, what? Two hundred. Two. Two cosine. Two hundred seventy-two pi t over two. What's two seventy-two divided by two? Um. Uh, one, uh, four, six. One four six. No, uh, it's not because forty-six is nine. Plus forty-six is ninety-two. It is one thirty-six. Uh, Add them together. Divide by. Smooth. Two. Two. It's only going to have one T. So what is it? What? One thirty. 
6, pi t. Now somebody figure out what that mess is. You just did it perfectly. Um, I think oh, it's going to be neighboring. Yeah. That's okay. 120, 28, 38. I'm still working. Wait, what? Uh, so I'm doing it. You're doing it in your head. Negative 16. Negative so divided by 2. It's got to be divided by 2. Okay, eight. Eight. Negative 8. Negative 8. I was doing the top. Yeah. Negative 8. Pi t. Pi t. Pi t. Now, <laughs> cosine of a negative angle. Oh, it, it's, uh, oh, the, it's going to be the. Um, Where do you ask it? Cosine of a negative angle. angle. It's oh, it's like going to be cosine angle. of a negative angle. Let's go get this one. Yeah, but what happens to the negative? Does it change the sign or does it leave it goes out in front? It, what? It's it's positive, reverse, Say right? who won now? Ah. Oh, cosine, cosine of a negative angle is equal to either plus or minus cosine of the original angle. Sure. Which one is it? Positive. Positive. Wait, says who? I do. Oh, do I have to prove it? Says what? Here's an angle. The coordinate at the end on the unit circle is AB. Here's the negative angle. The coordinate of it will be A. Negative but cosine B. And, that. and cosine is the first coordinate. So it doesn't change. Whether you do cosine of negative theta or you do cosine of positive theta. This would be negative theta or negative x. And this would be positive Why x. Why is it in the fourth quadrant? Because if you go positive, it goes into the first quadrant. If you go negative, it goes into the... Fourth. So it's automatically positive. It automatically changes to a positive, so all you have to do is change that sign. Alright. Yeah. What can you tell me about the period of that curve? It is 8 pi. No, it's not. It is One eight. p. Is 18? How do you find the period of a cosine curve? Divided by 2. Cut in 4. 16 pi. Holy Christ, you all forgot how to find the period. Set it equal to, okay. equal to 2 pi. So you go a pi t is equal to four. 2 pi. So t is equal to 4. 1 4. Thank you. 1 4. <laughs> um, what's the period of this graph over here? Hold on. One, it's it's going to be uh, 1 over. Um, 70, or no, 68. 68? Don't doubt me. I don't doubt you. I do. So, the amount of time this curve on the right-hand side gets through one cycle is a fourth of a second. Mm -hmm. The amount of time that the second part of this graph is going to go through is 1 68th of a second. So while this one is going through one cycle, this one's going through, how many times is 4 going through 68? Um, it goes 17, 17, 17 times. times. So while this one's going through one cycle, this one's going through 17 of them. So what happens to the graph of this is really kind of neat. Four goes into 68. While this one goes through one fourth of a second, this one's going through 17 of those seconds. 17 of those seconds. Right. So while one curve is doing this, and this takes one fourth of a second way out here. It's crazy. The Please other curve, I have to do an image here. Ooh, I missed it. There we go. The other curve is in here doing this. It's crazy. Why does it go up and, like, why does it, like. It, what happens is slow this down. one becomes like the amplitude. As this one grows slowly, it becomes the top of the curve of that one as it bounces back and forth. But why does it like get smaller? Why does it shrink down? Because as this one gets closer to zero, it's going to force the whole thing equal to zero. Does that make sense? Like okay. this becomes point yes. one, this point one is going to overlap anything that one does. It could be one and it'll still force it down to point one. If it's smaller than one, it's definitely going to be smaller than point one. So what happens is this part becomes the amplitude. Kind of, and this one becomes. Kind of. How does it frequency. become the amplitude? Kind of. Well, it's changing. 